you've probably seen Rube Goldberg machines before. The Rube Goldberg machines are, are illustrations by the famous cartoonist Rube Goldberg of, of complicated processes to accomplish very simple tasks. Right now I'm showing you an example of a Rube Goldberg machine, one that he designed that I think is pretty appropriate for today. Essentially it's Rube Goldberg's idea of, of how to take a selfie. You know, Rube Goldberg machines illustrate the ridiculousness of taking very simple things and making them overcomplicated. Overcomplicating things. It's, it's what the Pharisees like Paul had done for generations. The law of Moses was hard enough to follow. Impossible, in fact. And then people like the Pharisees came along and they added layer upon layer upon layer of regulation on top of it. And in the early church, that same beast had appeared in the form of these Judaizers, these teachers that were saying, uh, trying to convince the Galatians that to have hope of eternal life, they had to accept that same heavy burden of legalism that people had failed to lift for centuries. Paul continues his discussion of this in Galatians 2, verses 3 to 5. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, was compelled to be circumcised, even though he was a Greek. This matter arose because some false brothers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus and to make us slaves. We did not give in to them for a moment, so that the truth of the gospel might remain with you. Just as a reminder, we're, Paul is re referring here to the Council of Jerusalem that's described in Acts chapter 15. Paul had gone to Jerusalem, we talked about this in our last video, uh, to see what the leaders of the Jerusalem church thought about the gospel he was preaching, that, that essentially that the Gentile Christians didn't need to be circumcised in order to follow Jesus. Paul says that he took Titus with him to that meeting. And Titus is a Gentile man who became a pastor on the island of Crete. And Paul later wrote a letter to Titus that was aptly titled the Book of Titus. And as a Gentile, Titus was never circumcised. But I want you to think about what it was like for Titus to go to this meeting, to this Jerusalem council. I mean, he was a Gentile, maybe the only Gentile at that meeting, and in a meeting with, with Jewish Christians. I mean... Peer pressure alone might have made him choose circumcision. I mean, he was the uncircumcised elephant in the room. Paul talks about these false brothers. In other words, not real Christians, Judaizers, people who pretended to be Christians and influenced others in the church to insist that new converts become circumcised. The same group that were now causing trouble for the Galatians. In other words, they were causing trouble back at that council in Jerusalem, and now years later, they're continuing to cause trouble in Galatia. And what did these, real, these false teachers really want, according to Paul? They wanted to exercise control over these new Christians. I mean, when there's a lot of rules to follow, the people that know the rules can have a lot of power over the people who don't know the rules, which is why talking to the IRS is always so terrifying. If the Judaizers won this argument at the Council of Jerusalem, the Gentile Christians would have to turn to them, to the people, the Judaizers, who knew the rules. They would have to turn to the Judaizers to make sure that they stayed on the right path. See, the problem with legalism, according to William Hendrickson, is that being in legalism is kind of like being a fly caught in a spider web. The more you struggle to break free, the, the more entangled you become. You redouble your effort only redoubles your frustration and your hopelessness. It's impossible. It's impossible to get out. And that's why Christ came. I mean, Paul later says in this chapter in Galatians 2, he says, If righteousness could be gained through the law, then Christ died for nothing. And so in verse 5, Paul says, we did not give in to them for a moment so that the truth of the gospel might remain in you. Paul says that he and the other apostles, like Peter, that they stood up for freedom so that the truth of the gospel would not become perverted. I mean, if the truth of the gospel is, it becomes grace plus works, it's no longer about grace. 
if a equals 5, then a plus 1 cannot also equal 5. The moment that you add works as a condition of salvation, the good news is no longer good news. It is a sentence to following a bunch of rules and, and failing pretty miserably at it. And as God's Spirit gave wisdom to the true believers at that Council of Jerusalem, the question didn't really turn out to be much of a controversy after all. Everyone agreed that no chains should be put on the freedom of those who trusted in Christ, whether Jewish or Gentile. And what was the extent of the new rules that the Gentiles had to, had to follow? Uh, according to this council at Jerusalem, well, the, the Apostle James summed it up best. This is Acts 15, 19 to 21. James says this, It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write to them, telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from the meat of strangled animals, and from blood. For Moses has been preached in every city from the earliest times, and is read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. What rules did these Gentile Christians have to follow? What was the extent of that legalism? Well, first of all, don't eat meat offered to idols. In other words, don't participate in pagan worship. Honor God by honoring marriage. In other words, don't be a part of sexual immorality. And then finally, don't eat the meat of strangled animals. This is an Old Testament concept that says that life of an animal is in the blood, and so you drain the blood out of the animals before you eat them. And that's it. Now, now, does that mean, though, that we don't have to follow any of the other commandments? No, it doesn't. But the truth is, if you're living to please God, if you're seeking to love God with all of your heart, and if you're seeking to love other people, to love others as yourself, then the Holy Spirit, which is inside of you, will guide you along the right path. And that's the point that Paul works towards in this letter to the Galatians. As believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit lives within us. And as we grow in our faith, we learn to listen to the Spirit's guidance, to the Spirit's voice. And the Holy Spirit will never lead us into sin. Because of the Spirit that is within us, we don't have to follow hundreds of rules in order to make God happy. We only have to be led by the Spirit of God. Thank you for watching our video. Feel free to like it, leave a comment, share it with somebody else. Visit our website, newparisfirst.com. If you're in the New Paris area, we would love to see you in church on a Sunday morning. We'd love to see you 10 a.m. on Sunday, corner of 3rd and Clinton in New Paris. May God bless you. We'll see you next time.